Game number one, though, on Acropolis. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, now. Wait, now. <laughs> And in the top left-hand corner, the blue Terran player. Pixel 1 Fantasy. Or Gumiho. That's his also his other idea. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is going to be a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> and in the bottom left-hand corner, in the red. Psystorm Gaming. Close enough. Gumiho. Bottom right, bottom left, same thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so. It's okay, it's okay. True fact, I mm -hmm. didn't go to first grade as a kid. Oh. I was one of those annoying kids, and I skipped from kindergarten to second. So, uh, and like it, I'm fairly normal otherwise. You know, That's like the only thing you need as a caster, but too. But legitimately, <laughs> in first grade, there, I, I found there are two things that I didn't learn. One is how to jump rope without doing double bound in the middle. Like, you, you learn how to jump rope quickly in first grade. Sure. And you also learn how to quickly tell the difference between your left and your right. So I messed that up, I'd say, 50% of the time. It's like a coin flip for me. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I, as a guy who did a lot of marching band, just say in the you bottom, would then. think. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip from, from ex experienced caster Jake, just say yeah. the bottom. Figure <laughs> you, it out. Can't, you can't be wrong. They're actually like, well, technically, you know. Technically, you're right. Oh, geez. It's that and then um, locusts and vipers. For some reason, I call those two units whatever the heck I want to. I cannot tell them apart for the life it's of me. Me neither. I don't build either of them. <laughs> That's the meme, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hilarious. So, both getting CCs, Rax, uh, Reaper, everything is very standard. They're both mirroring. Sometimes we see people get a little bit of a later CC in a quicker factory, which is totally fine, a little bit safer mm -hmm. um, against proxies and stuff like that. But we don't, I don't think either player thinks they're going to be a proxy rex on Acropolis. No, definitely not. As you can see, there's a supply depot already blocking the Reaper spot for Gumiho. So he's basically pretty safe against that, anyways. This could be annoying. Sneaking the SCV is going to go and attack the uh, CC SCV. Yeah, that'll slow him down just a little bit. Nice play this by Gumiho. This is a Protoss move. He's learning from the Protosses. <laughs> He's picking up from his from his previous. Look at the games. Reaper came home. Yep. <laughs> oh wow. Yep. Gonna delay him just a couple extra seconds here. Oh. Oh, but the Reaper. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is a little bit of a micro battle. If he can get this as he blood for blood. Yeah. Come on. Oh. Oh, there's a little bit of a mistake. He You're might kidding lose it. me. Whoa. Oh, okay, that's oh, a huge mistake. Oh, fantasy. The collapse from the studio. Yeah. Going wild here. Huge mistake from <laughs> Fan or Gumiho rather. All right, we're joking. How big of a deal is that really? Oh, not if he loses this one, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. Oh. He's going to get it. Oh, my God. Okay, well, man. Not a big deal at all is the answer. <laughs> I got all excited. My heart rate got all up. I was doing some exercise here in the chair and, and no dice. Nothing at all. It would it would be pretty annoying, though, otherwise. It might still be annoying now because there's one Reaper and there's no Reaper for oh, Fantasy. That's true. Fantasy adding on a uh, oh, Starport. Hellions. hellions are going to kill this. Look, oh, he's getting yeah. out. He's like, oh, God. <laughs> those are a lot faster than I thought. He can hear the final bolts getting screwed into those Hellions as they pop out of the factory. I like that as soon as he saw the reactor, he's like, oh, God. <laughs> this, this Reaper might die here. It should die, rather. Yeah. It's just going to lead them on into like a random area. so yeah, that just distract them as long as he can. Yeah, at least they're not attacking the SCV line. Okay, so first big changes coming out in these builds. We see Medivac on the way from Fantasy. The Cyclone, though. Cyclones are so good against what, what the plan is for Fantasy. It looks like he's going for Hellion Drop. If the Cyclone is well-placed right. and there's a bunker at the Nat, um, you know, the Cyclone could totally kill this Medivac. Yeah, Gumi's going to shut that down instantaneously. Now, Fantasy already is out of the map just a little bit here, so it should be hit very quickly. Uh, the Medivac just popping out now. But yeah, I think you're right. Gumiho should be should be just fine. Cyclone into the main. <laughs> Somebody unplugging and pulling back their mouse. <laughs> um, uh, the Medivac should be just fine. Uh, uh, pardon me, Gumiho should be just fine against this medevac drop. Yeah, it depends, because there there could be a little bit of a mind game. Imagine you send the medevac in the main, right? Mm -hmm. And you run your Hellions through the net, and there's nothing in the medevac. That would be a, certainly be a mind game. But he's not doing it. That would be insane. My mind would be oh literally Oh my god, blown. the Cyclone already there. Gumiho reading his mind. He's okay. got one of those waiters at that bistro in the now, middle area. Does, he, does he do my build, my plan? I don't think he does. <laughs> he's, he's going so far. Oh. Oh, he could be repositioning him up there. Now. The thing is, he's waited too long already. Like, you have, like, the small window where it's really strong. It's going for double cyclone drop. Oh, my gosh. Gumiho is saying, oh, oh, hey, dropping mech units in your main base? That's a great idea. Do you think he... Okay, he might go for it. Do you think he might hunt down that medevac, too? Do you just run these four Hellions right by the, the, the full bunker? <laughs> the boost. The other medevac boosts immediately towards the cyclone. Or the Hellions, like... Yeah. <laughs> a little <laughs> late, though. So Magfield Accelerator coming out from Gumiho, and uh, third CC on the way for Fantasy. I like Fantasy's uh, build more so far, because there's nothing you can really do to hit a timing against um, 
fan fantasy, right? Like, you can just build tanks and chill. Uh, whereas Gumiho's tanks. kind of taking a little bit later third. He's that's getting a... You know the faster shooting cyclone ability. I don't know what it's actually called. I think that's that's Terran. That's Terran Tinder, isn't it? Tanks and chill. Siege tanks and chill. Tanks and chill. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Magfield accelerator. By the way, the name of that upgrade. Yeah. I'm not very good with upgrades. Uh, One you of don't my have first. To be. You're good at actually playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a nice drop here from Fantasy. Actually, should roast a few of these oh, SCVs. This is really good. The cyclone's out of position. That medevac just getting called back. And oh my gosh, those all still alive. Oh, he Immediately disables it. Oh, disables it. Gets one of. Is he gonna get, pick? He's gonna, oh. get both. he's gonna get the medevac too. Beautiful. Oh, oh my god. And the Hellions are still out. Okay, he might lose his medevac, but that's totally worth it. Eight, eight SCVs go down. Absolutely, eight SCVs. Four Hellions. There, there is. I don't have to do the math myself. Thank goodness. <laughs> so uh, about twice as efficient and there for fantasy. Here's the thing too. The third CC is later. Double engineering, but we actually see bio though. Whoa! We're gonna see fantasy play bio against Gumiho's mech. Oh, I'm excited. I love my mech versus. Let me try that again. I love <laughs> Mech versus Bio. I should call it Beck versus Mayo. Beck versus Mayo that's is a, that's my a, favorite matchup as well. That's a beer, and then I, it sounds like an Australian new wave singer, Mayo. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, Mech versus Mech Bio. Mech versus Bio is so intricate. I, I always play Bio as a Terran player, and every time I play Mech, I feel like I'm playing against a brick wall. Okay. It's the most obnoxious thing ever. Well, yeah, those siege, I mean, those siege tanks get dug in. It's so hard to move out, uh, even with Sting. The thing is, this doesn't feel like the same style of Mech I usually play against. This is more of a mobile Mech. And I feel like Bio is generally really good against low tank numbers. If it's like a low tank mech count, like let's say a heavy Hellion, heavy Cyclone or whatever. Okay. Marine tank or Marine Marauder tank is really strong. Interesting. Well, let's see what Gumi does. He's got he's got a couple Vikings coming out already, two at a time from that starport, and he is cranking out a tank as well. His second factory did just finish up. 56 workers to 49. The qu yeah. Does, I don't know what scouting we got with the Hellions. I'm not 100% sure if uh, Fantasy knows this is mech, like fully. There's ah. only two factories. That's a really good point. And only one starport? Wow, that's so many Vikings already out for fantasy. He probably has his uh, assumptions either way. He either scouted it up fully already and I didn't see, or he can just assume because it's Gumiho. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to harp on this point. Um, fantasy with four or six Vikings out already and two more on the way. Yep. This is the most important thing about bio versus mech is air superiority. Sure. Uh, if the mech player has air superiority, you the basically can't do anything. Yeah. Like there's nothing, there's no window. Okay, that's an interesting scan because you see a bunch of Marines and tanks. Yeah. If he doesn't know already, this might be a little bit confusing. Yeah, that might mislead him a little bit. Gumiho dropped a double armory, so he is going to be, be uh, on top of the upgrade game, just barely Gumiho, ahead. Yeah, Fantasy doesn't have um, combat shields yet either. Oh so. no, he doesn't. Oh, okay, that's bad. <laughs> Losing a big battalion of Marines there. Oh, there's nothing back home to defend against this though. The Vikings are close though. Oh. Uh... Where they're like are right they? here. Oh, right, yeah, they're they're right with the tanks. The there. bottom corner. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so, so this is dead. And no, only killed three Yeah, workers. no cloak. Well, five kills. <laughs> the disable from the Raven. That's cute. I've got so much Raven energy. I can disable your Banshee. Try getting away now, baby. I think the most important thing to to really know, because I really wish we had like the ability to talk to the Observer, right. is to know if he knows it's Bio or Mech yet. Yeah. he scanned randomly, which is a little bit strange if you know it's Mech already to scan like that. Okay, there's another scan. Middle of the map, but not going to see anything. Yeah. I'll try and keep my eyes on the minimap, but our viewers back home can do the same. Okay, if they here we go. They were checking. I don't think that factory was like that. I don't know. No. It's hard to say. Oh, it's only two factories still. This is so strange to me. Yeah. And we're not adding on more earlier. And a fourth CC. Okay, now we know it's mech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There <laughs> it is. Like a bunch of tanks. Hello. No Marines whatsoever. You're like, okay. <laughs> so Gumi with a fourth is CC, he... is that just for the mules? Is he just desperate here? There's no way he can defend a fourth location, right? He doesn't right? need to drop it yet. He's just going to chill. He's, he's tanking and chilling, like we talked about. Siege tank and chill. There's a lot of reactors as well for uh, someone who knows they're playing against mech. Like, normally you want to add on some uh, mar marauders, because marines are really bad against tanks. Of course. But, man, he's still got nine marines. I don't see any marauders in his build. I'd love to see a second starport, too. Uh, uh, yeah, a second starport would be so sick, because if you get your air advantage, and then you go into uh, liberators with vikings ah, against yeah, mech, yeah, yeah. it's so strong. Just destroy siege tank yeah. lines. That would be really smart. Let's see if he's right, playing the now same 40 This, this is undeni <laughs> undeniably <laughs> mad. see two factories being built, three factories being built. Okay, go, immediately right. the starports go down. Immediately two starports go down. Wow, okay, yeah. yeah. So again, I think Fantasy listening to our cast. We're, so we're he didn't know it. until now, because as soon as he scanned a new 100% that it was mech, Changes. he immediately throws down the starports, which makes total sense, right? Uh, air superiority being so important. Absolutely. He's going to make it really, really hard for... Uh, Gumiho to take a, another base as well. Yeah. Ooh, Fantasy putting pressure on the low ground here. Nice. The structure <laughs> is complete indeed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this is just going to be really annoying. Like, where do you take your fourth here? You don't want to take the top top fourth. It's too spread out yeah, for there's mech. There's no way you expand. You want to take this fourth, but it's kind of hard to take it now. 
this Viking number from Gumiho looking really oh, scary. I don't know if there's enough shot off here. Yeah. Ooh, trying to draw that bio and under siege tanks maybe. Um, but uh, man, that bio ball looks dangerously small for fantasy compared to the number of Vikings. That's okay that are though, there. because we have so many starports. Yeah, that's true. Okay, oh, he's adding on three starports. Four starports? Yep. It's what? time to go mech, kinda. We're not going mech, we're going battle cruiser Viking. Going, yeah, we're doing sky. everything. We're just sky going Terran, Terran. baby. Oh, beautiful. It, it's so important that Gumiho knows this is coming because then he can also do this. He needs to match it or else he's going to lose. Right away. Yeah, in those big Viking fights, as soon as you get like, you know, five or ten behind. What right. can you do, especially with the, the massive production that Fantasy is putting on right now? Yeah, like so far, this doesn't look like that. Uh, if you're if you're Gumiho and you see this big bio marine tank army, this looks really standard. You can't really tell me starports are at home. I'm, it's not like we see a million times more Vikings, which you would if you had four starports. I'm really liking Fantasy's tactic here, just staying out on the map, staying active, keeping Gumiho back home, and preventing like any it, of that scouting. But we may miss our last train <laughs> because. Uh, this game could play out really slowly. I don't see either player committing to an attack at any point in the future. Uh, it either ends abruptly with like a massive Sky Army uh -huh. versus a you know non-existent one, or it draws out really lo really long game. Like imagine Battlecruiser Viking. That's games. okay. We we get paid triple if it goes into. Uh, I, I wish. Over. Wait wait. <laughs> I wish. My production director is telling me we don't get paid triple if it goes into overtime. Yeah, that's okay though. We get paid in games. So actually, the, yeah, does the game just end here? I, oh my god! No position way! Here. Yeah, siege tanks not up here for Gumiho and Fantasy. All the SCVs are pushing forward. Oh my gosh! But breaks that bunker. All the siege tanks on the low ground starting <laughs> to leapfrog over each other. Are you kidding me? Fantasy was not expected to just oh, win here. By the way, there's no, no way. Definitely not. Maybe putting on some pressure, oh. but this is incredible. The Vikings getting better shots this up here. Bio under the Vikings. He's disabled those two tanks as well. I can't believe he just walked in. Like what? he's been posturing this army around for like the entire game. And then randomly he's like, you know what? It's time to go. Let's poke in here at the second and then just hits the gas. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like and, a, and the funny thing is, Fantasy did not want to kill him here. No. He had a million starports at home. He's prepping for a massive battle. He's got he's got oh, you know what he might have been doing way. actually. He might have been ready to trade some of his army to get more oh, to sky toss. Sure, 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 sure. And then just won the game. Oops. Oops, Oops I yeah. won. GG. Oops, all siege tanks and fantasy gonna take game number one. What is happening? Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Gumiho's got to be feeling a lot of pressure right now. Down on the ropes. Man, I think that's that's just straight vodka in his water bottle to calm his nerves, <laughs> man, at this point. Oh, my god! It gosh. should be. I mean, what a game. I, I don't really feel like Gumiho made too many mistakes besides that last fight either. Right. Like, the, their styles clash in a, a weird way. And Fantasy didn't really pick up on it until a late point anyway, so it wasn't like he was really being abused but by then, any means. But then the instant transition there from Fantasy, I mean, the that shift made sense. here. Yeah, right. it was beautiful. Just as soon as he saw it, shifting over from that bio. We didn't even get bio. to see the transition, though. <laughs> <laughs> he set himself up so well, showing that he still has, like, a really good mental command of where he sits in this game. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm sad we didn't see the two-hour game. <laughs> but uh, I did think that that would how it, it would either end immediately, like I said, right, or, right, right. or we would see a longer game. Do the trade and go into that Sky Terran like we were talking about earlier. So you're right. Gumiho, you're three games up, you're three games down. What prayer are you saying right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope I win. <laughs> I hope I win. That sounds like a great prayer Yeah. for any player. All right, guys, regardless of what he's praying for, let's go into game number two. Fight. in the top right hand corner with an amazing attack. Pixel One Fantasy. He's almost smiling, look at that. I would be smiling if I was him. Imagine you're playing Armani, you're like, ooh. And in the bottom left hand corner, in the red. Psystorm Gaming, Gumiho. Hope he's not feeling the pressure. It's really hard to not get in your own head at this point. After losing to Armani and being down 1-0, it's, yeah, it's really hard to stay out of your own head. Plus, he sounded a little bit shook in interview and in person. So well, Every time we talked to him in the interviews, every time the interview we saw, he said something like, I'm a little nervous. After yeah. my performance, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little shaky. I'm not quite all the way there. You it, can be it, the best player in the world, but if you are nervous in matches, you're not going to be the best player in the world. <laughs> it's you so need sheer confidence. You need innovation level, Maru level, Sarah level confidence. Just, right, right. Uh, to be a world-class player, it's so important that you're mentally... Uh, in the right position, which is so interesting because of, all, of our four players here today, I feel like Gumiho has a, you know a, a dearth of experience out yeah, on the does, stage. He does. He's, he's been doing this for ages now. He hasn't done his he's military service. There's not a big gap in his you know like his record like uh, like these guys.
guys like Fantasy and and, and um, uh, Armani. Armani is the player <laughs> I was looking. I, I only had four <laughs> names to choose from, and I totally blanked. Wasn't there? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, Gumiho, really interesting psychological position that he's got to be in here. Uh, yeah. Oh three. It's just so important to not of psych yourself out. Not think about the fact that you are down one. Just play your game. It's. Um, really important that you're just playing the best game you can possibly play. Even if you lose, you know, then at least you feel happy about your loss. It's kind of hard to say like that, but if you lose a game where you truly played your heart out and you knew you played the best you could, it's not the same as losing a game you knew you could have played better or sure. you knew you could have won. Or if you just cheesed and you were like, I mean, whatever, let's just see what happens. Sure. You, you can't feel good about that one, right? Yeah, well, I like that. That feels good <laughs> when I do that. But sure. Okay. So Gumiho looks like he is going for something pretty standard here. Uh, both players just expanding out, getting those factories added on. Right. Um, again, setting up for, for a pretty good mid-game play here. Yep. Nothing's crazy. Looks like we might see a Banshee. Yeah, Tech Lab is finished there. Marine's coming out. No stim, so what else could it possibly be? Uh, I don't know, man. I cast a lot of Silver League games. This could be anything for me. Well, fortunately, <laughs> that's not one of those games. This is not one of those oh, games. Oh, thank goodness. Cyclone. I like the Cyclone versus a, a Banshee. I think um, it's just like a hard counter, basically. Banshees yeah. really can't do much with a, a Cyclone. Cyclones are so versatile, man. Uh, in, They're in great TVTs. defense. Yeah. They feel really well defensive. Because really, what can you have? You have Hellions, you have Reapers, you have Banshees. And they're all just terrible. Against the, yeah, the yeah. early game Cyclones there. So yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, Fantasy with a, with, a, with a good play. And there it is. Starport swaps over. Cloak, Cloak immediately yep. starts. What a good call. Cloak is, Cloak is the only way you can make something happen, though. Like, if you have Cloak, maybe you can dodge a, a lock-on, or maybe he doesn't have detection. If you sure. don't have Cloak, you're actually really sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, is it two tech labs from Fantasy? It is, right? That's the second tech lab? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That, oh, he's going actually going Cloak himself. himself. That's a little weird, because you're going Cyclone first. Sure, why not? Okay. You do whatever you want. Well, okay, interesting. So Fantasy scrubs in that Cyclone, which is pretty unusual to then go for Banshee, but his Banshee doesn't look that far behind, I'm worried, right? Normally, you, you get a Raven with a Cyclone, but ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you literally can hold everything. But if you go Cloak, you don't have the gas, right? His gas count is 30. Yeah, he does yeah. not have enough for a Raven after this. Interesting. Yeah, so he has to make sure he doesn't lose all his scans. If he's really, really good, he'll know the, the uh, Cloak timing, and he'll save scans for it. Okay. Well, let's keep an eye on those. And those he is scan really, really good. Then. So, well, that's true. He should he should not just die to a banshee. That would be weird. Second banshee coming out for Gumio as well, and the first one not Ooh, out of the match. Banshee gets Ooh, scouted. Nice. That late reaper in the four and a half minute reaper gets some and real work done. Too. <laughs> oh my gosh! Sees immediately everything an engineering there. bay goes down. Yeah. I think you cancel cloak. Yep. Wait, he canceled it right. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, canceled okay. cloak. So cancel cloak and, and then build starts a the raven. Perfect. Smart. This is perfect. And Gumi's not moving out with that banshee just yet. There it is, the two Banshees moving out final. Are, are those Banshees on the map There's there? There's one there. Oh, there it is, okay. And that does have Cloak. Yeah, and there's not a lot of, is there energy for scans? I don't see it just yet. He's getting underneath, but no scan just yet. Not there. There might be one in the main. Maybe, I thought he dropped those meals at about the same I time. I did, he did. Oh, this could get some work done there. Banshee. Oh man, so the Banshee already had two kills. Let's see what it can get done. I mean, doing so much already. Oh, 34 workers of 40. Raven's still about five seconds away from popping out here. Do you have a scan slows, now? Slows down fight? the building of the engineering bay. Oh, Raven, Raven, Raven. Oh, scan. scan and the Raven. Oh, oh, oh loses picks it. off the Cyclone. What? Yeah, this oh, is Oh, that hero Banshee with eight kills. Oh, there's another one. And the second one undetected as of yet. Just 12 SCVs have just... gone down. <laughs> Does the game just end? Are you this, joking? This game might actually just end. This is There's so a second SCP Banshee in the kills. main, right? There's only one Raven, so it can't go between both bases. Yep. It, unless the second Banshee died. Uh, maybe he did pick up. There was very low on health, I saw. I mean, the Raven 19, was still sticking around. But 19 man, workers, what do you do? Look at the disrespect. He's trying to pick off individual Marines here, kiting in and out. Gumiho with dominant Raven performance there. And, and, oh, well, on, oh, it is still alive. Fancy, honestly, just sort of failing to defend. Ooh, he's going to be careful. Nine kills. Unbelievable. Nineteen kills. <laughs> SCV has killed a bunch of Marines. He has a third CC on the way. Gumiho with a dominating game this time. Jeez. So as Gumiho, what does your army composition look like when you want to put the kibosh on this like thing? You want to play it whatever safe, right? Whatever the hell you want. Okay. <laughs> At this point, you could do whatever. You could even move out. You know why not? Just borrow some vultures from StarCraft One and and head out across yeah, the map. Could, sure. I would. I would allow it. That's fine. <laughs> At this point, it's uh, it's such a commanding lead. I think this what he's doing now is really smart. Like you're gonna faint an attack. I don't think we ever really fully commit because it doesn't make mm -hmm. much sense when you're so far ahead, anyways. Sure. Uh, faint the attack, make him build units, make him not have a third, and then just 
you know, make SCVs. And we see uh, SCVs in production, we see the third CC, we see Stim. Like, this is not a committed attack. Uh-oh, another engineer. Oh, 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 freeze frame. Maybe PP? No PP, okay. Okay, we're fine. It was, it was the end of an 80s movie there for just a minute. Those Marines were like jumping up to high five and they had to have that freeze frame for the photo. Yeah, look at this skin. He knows exactly where you put a tank. Look at that. Oh, so beautiful. Gorgeous. The Ravens as well. You know, that's just <laughs> that's just sick. Turret harass? Yeah, forcing out the mining. Oh, man. Nice cleanup on the Banshee. Okay. okay. And a Banshee of his own going back, but a missile turret's already there. If this Banshee kills 20, then we might have He's a He's got a chance. <laughs> All right, gets pushed away. Only a couple SCVs go down. Does lose oh, a two. Yeah, ouch. Well, good. he canceled Cloak, didn't he? Right, so... Yes. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Look at that. Feigning the attack. Yep. Forcing some back. fear and moving back. Look at this third base. It's fully saturated already. It's beautiful. Is it, is it fantasy's time to feign an attack? That would be a little weird. What, with two Reapers? No, no, no. Like, we've seen Unseige and move out on the map. Ah, no. Heading back. Getting forced back home by the turret harass continuing. That Raven is being so frustrating there in the natural for Gumi. Or for uh, fantasy. The only natural. thing that... Uh, there's a huge lead in air, right? I believe there's a sky... Advantage for fantasy? I don't. I don't see the units tab. There's right. a lot of Vikings out already. I didn't either. That's true. I have seen a few out from Gumi as well. Four Vikings, one four. Raven, and versus then two, ba two back yeah, home for Four Gumi. Vikings, two. Okay, it's basically even. Never mind. All right, all right. Which means this game is really, really favored for Gumiho. Yeah, the army supply is drawing even, but Fantasy cutting a lot of corners there. And as the game goes on, I mean, Gumiho is just going to get more and more ahead here. The scan's going down. The tank lines are being established. Third is just being landed now. Oh, this is going to look like a little bit longer. This TV third base team. has been mining for 45. Block it, block it, block it, block it. Oh, almost. <laughs> right. yeah. It's okay. Okay, so now Gumi knows the timing of that third base. And knows that he's way far ahead now. Way far ahead. I mean, he probably had that in the back of his mind, but now he can confirm it. Yeah, and he doesn't see... need to do anything irrational. He doesn't need to really make any commitments. He can just play very passive and reactive and just be ahead in basically all stages of this game. That's exactly what he's doing. Adding uh, on the barracks, getting his plus one, plus one. I like the option of going bio. I think if you go mech in this situation, you give your opponent a lot of uh, room to kind of react and to build up. Okay. Whereas bio, you have to be, you're constantly putting on pressure. You're constantly fainting attacks like you're doing now. You sure. can't do this with mech, right? Well, this is interesting. You're getting a tank light up. You're trying to cut fantasy off, it looks like, from his re retreat route. A couple disables going down on the Ravens. The Dorito Cannon is completely on oh, the Vikings. Oh, both of them. So, yeah, um, Fantasy going to take oh air my control, God, wait. though. It was Fantasy's kind of bad, Vikings though. all take out. Right? Because he, he got the Dorito dust off, and then he was focusing the Ravens, so all the Vikings were just shooting his Vikings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ravens got taken out, but the Vikings, Fantasy now with a huge Viking advantage. But, man, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Gumiho's army is still very, <gasps> very scary. Picks off the mass repair oh going down God, on the third base, and Fantasy that barely... That was a big mistake, though. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. This was a big mistake. Like, he focused the... Wait. He yeah, tried to focus too. the CC. Yeah. Oh, oh. Fantasy gonna reestablish himself here. Oh no, this oh, is a really big mistake. Man, from Gumi losing a couple tanks. Those uh, Vikings worth their weight in gold, forcing Gumiho back. Yeah, this is very strange. I feel like we're trying to give this game back to uh, <laughs> Fantasy oh, a little Fantasy, bit. Fantasy, you had my interest, and now you have my attention. Okay. Yeah, he did not need to be so aggressive. He lost all of his air superiority. He lost all of his marines. He lost some tanks. <laughs> like, he, this this did not go well at all. By any sure. Now, now, Gumiho, I think, still ahead, right? He's got four fourth base on the way. Oh, He's got a my worker goodness. Lead and a big doom this drop is going like, in. Yeah. Straight to the main. Hello. Okay, this is really, really, really annoying. Tanks on the high ground. Those Vikings don't do oh, anything Look at all the SCVs are getting shot down. He's on top of the production. What are you going to do? Go up a ramp into three tanks? Is that what it is? Picks off a tank as it pops out of the factory as well. The, the medevacs oh, are going to take it down. These units are all going to get sacrificed, but at what cost? This is a nice little counter punch here for Gumiho. Yeah, economically speaking, he's in a great spot now. Land I mean, he was Vikings. before. Okay, oh. now we're going to clean it up, but at what cost again? Yeah, Fantasy giving up a lot of those Vikings. His air advantage certainly gone down. 24 SCVs in that one last you know, little billy in the main base. <laughs> this move you usually make when you're behind. You know, like this is like such a YOLO move. Imagine there's Vikings there and three medevacs go down or something like that. Yeah. This was a move you usually make when you're behind, but he made it when he's dead. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and no, he no. took an even bigger advantage. Yeah, I wonder if Fantasy was like a little bit distracted with those. He had two Liberators out trying to get some, some pick offs, but man. Uh, Just uh, look at the the center tower, though, right? Like, I think that that gap is big enough for the medevacs to f fly through. <laughs> like a tightrope walker, yep. straight through that. That's beautifully done. Okay. So Gumiho reestablishing his lead? Gumiho definitely reestablishing his lead. Great, great. He was teetering on the brink of being even there for a minute. But yeah, I think I think now he must feel more confident. Gumiho has an upgrade lead as well. So oh, he does. So passively 
Fantasy could defend, but this is not looking like a good game. Oh no, if he sees a huge opening right here, there's gonna oh, be three siege tanks at your natural. I don't know how you're gonna get in position for this. On the low One ground, tank. spotting with those medevacs, the Vikings are riding and it's backup. being shot, so that tank is dead. And now we can drop bio at your natural. Good yep. luck. This Four. is gonna be nearly impossible to defend. <gasps> Four medevacs full of marines dropping with on the natural. Higher upgrades too. Oh, it's disgusting to and watch. The too. Why not? GG. There it is. Gumiho bringing that was us. like the most clean checkmate I've ever seen. That really <laughs> was. He set himself up so well, stumbling very briefly, and then just re re uh, reestablishing his dominance. We there see a end. one one now. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible when you work as a team, or just any time. Well, they're not working as a team. That's for sure. <laughs> They do not see each other as teammates right now. Definitely not. I mean, this is loser's match. This Coming is. down, a best of one series now for Gumiho to potentially go home. And fantasy as well. I mean, either one of these players. Goodness. This has been, the round of 32 this year has driven me insane. I mean, we had a lot of upsets <laughs> last time. But this time I feel like... Did Maru not go out of the round of 32? No, no, he's through. No, before. He, well, yeah, he did. So Maru got taken out in, in season the two. The best Terran player in the world. <laughs> got knocked out well, in the round of 32. And that happened, I think he was in Group A. So it happened immediately, and we were like, all right, this season's going to be nuts. Yeah. But for round, for season three now, I feel like it's been a mixed bag, you know? Uh, some under, some upsets, some of the normal guys going through. I, I'm, I'm just on my tiptoes the whole time. Let's see what happens on game three in King's Cove. Fight. Bottom right hand corner, building a spidey wood next to the gas refinery. See that? Picks one, fantasy. That was very impressive. Coming up with new things to say. Your words per minute doing a great job. All right, let's see if I can. Okay. Fantasy. Determined is always less smiley than he was last time on camera. And here we go in the top left hand corner in the red. Psy Storm Gaming. Gumiho. It's a 6.5 out of 10 for me. <laughs> Not bad. Didn't stick that landing though. It's too bad. much. It was too much. <laughs> Alrighty, so. So you're on game three, King's obviously. Cove. King's Cove is an interesting TVT map. There's a lot of areas where you can be really abusive if you get into them. Uh, looking at the third base, there's ledges, there's layers, ledges in towards the natural. Two base timing can be kind of scary. I'm no Terran player, but I've dealt with it a lot and it's really annoying. Yeah, man. I, my favorite part of King's Cove is the middle of the map here where there's, there's like, like you know, let me start over. The middle of the map. <laughs> it's okay. Where there's that narrow channel that you have to go through sure. with the high grounds on either side. Uh, I'm always I'm always so afraid in my games that I'm gonna walk through game, that. No, or a different map. You're talking about Cyberforce? No, no, no. Uh, there's two little high grounds at the uh, like the six o'clock and the um, or pardon me, the three o'clock and the nine o'clock with the destructible rocks on top of them. And there's oh, that narrow little choke sure. in the middle. It's very similar, right. uh, But slightly different. And I'm I mean, always yeah, I know nervous. Cyberforce, where that's like actually impenetrable. You're like that's oh that's, yeah, that's that basically just destructible rocks all the way through. The one square where yeah. it goes into that valley. Yeah, that's a terrible one. Um, I'm always nervous I when I move a bio though. army through here. Like it's very rare that the TBT army just like meets in the middle. <laughs> right. How right. many games do you see where they're like both ready to attack? And you're like, I'm gonna attack you, and he's like, No, I'm attacking you, That's and then true. they fight in the middle. Like, I see. I, th I feel like I see it a lot more in ZVT games. Where ZVT, yes. You're trying to push through that creep, and there's always that fight with like certain and failings. ZVT is like that because you want to keep pushing back the creep, so right. you kind of have to fight in the middle. That's usually where the creep kind of evens off. Okay. If you go too far more forward, then that's close to the Zerg productions. They push you back. If you go too far the other way, then it's Terran production. Okay. So you kind of get this like weird of like. It's like Dragon Ball Z or whatever, where like they're shooting beams <laughs> at each other. It's kind of like what a creep, creep clearing is like. I love that analogy. There's, it's like a well, that, that's it. I think they stole that trope for uh, StarCraft. That, and it's, the it's trope was like literally everywhere yeah. now. But yeah, it's, that it's, trope. Okay, it's, it's that trope where their beams are like shooting at each other. I mean, if it's a StarCraft cast, we have to call it Rock Shear, right? Isn't that what it is? It's the the, the Protoss fighting each other just sure. like that. But yeah. I'm off with the Dragon I Ball Z thing as well. I don't. Well, but I think I played the campaign fully. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a lore man. I'm more of a Starcraft man. I think I only know Rockshear because it was the, it was the name of one of the seasons last year, maybe. What and is this were, wall off? Do you see this wall off? That's super odd. <laughs> Get I mean, the cycle out works. again. It works. <laughs> it is a wall off. Yeah. Sure. Interesting. Okay, so one 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 mm -hmm. from Fantasy. Is that a third CC or a natural? Is it natural CC that late? That's just a natural. Yeah, CC. just a natural. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we may see another Banshee game this game. I mean, this is exactly the same thing we saw last time, right? With Gumiho just a little bit behind on his starport, but a little ahead yeah, on his natural. It's because Gumiho's nats, yeah, faster. Ooh, nice. Gets the SUV. Yeah. Oh, hello? Okay, there it is. Even a couple seconds there can be really annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, swap Banshee. over Cloak Banshees again. 
Is Gumi going to go into Cloak Banshees also? I mean, why not? He did so well last time. The yeah, only man. thing is he didn't build a Cyclone last time, and it was much faster last time. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably not, actually. And then yeah, Starport, yeah. Medivac. Medivac straight out. So, ooh. Okay, and, and uh, no second barracks just yet, so probably not a, a big drop early in the game. But yeah. just going to support himself. Yeah, we're just chilling. He's I don't think either player is going to go crazy. I ain't grown now. I think yeah. we're just going to chill. It's a, it's a classic game three situation, right? Both players just sort of feeling it out, playing very cautiously, giving themselves lots of opportunities right. to move down the tech tree uh, in any direction that they want. So no Banshee from Fantasy, interestingly. Straight to Raven. I like that. It's, it's a bit safer. I mean, especially after you got punished so hard oh, last game. yeah, man. He's probably just like trying not to cut any corners and not fall behind in the early game because I think he he saw that first game as like a true you know dominance true assertion of dominance and if you play such a clean and solid game as long as you don't just get robbed which is probably how he feels uh, you know just play the game out and win I can I could win in a fair fight why would I not make this a fair fight exactly so both players kind of just respecting all options from both players <laughs> so that's why we kind of get a bit of a passive fudge I'm wondering if this will well, actually do anything it usually doesn't got six oh, he's gonna get a supply high ground okay Free Supply Depot. Never bad. That's the right price to pay for a Supply Depot. These Marines are like, you know what? We can't do anything about that. That Marine's like, no, I've got it, boys. Everybody hold my beer. And then dies. He's like, well, close enough. You know what? It went from hold my beer to pour one out real fast. Yeah, that, that poor Marine. He tried. All right, so, yeah, again, no, no crazy things happening. 41 workers at 38. There's really not much going on. Third CC on the way. Second medevac for Gumi going to join this and attack. And third CC on the way as well. Yeah. Tank already out for fantasy. This is yeah. This is really interesting. Gumi's gonna get pushed away. Oh oh oh! oh the disable. This, this is, is so beautiful. Big. He's gonna get two cyclones and a medevac for free. You're kidding me. Oh my god. Okay, well that's really big. <laughs> it's not game-endingly big, but it's just so obno obnoxious. Unless this comes in and does a bunch of workers. Yeah, what a big win there for here. fantasy. Let's see if Gumi can even the scales. Fantasy checking with his army, but pushing back out. Fantasy's only oh, gonna be out of position here. Yeah. Gumi's drop going straight into the tank. Completely unscouted. That is a tank oh my. Range. Dear Aunt Jemima. The only thing is it's so little that you can actually pull SCVs here. Okay, he doesn't go for the attack. Okay, one tank shot. Looks like only one SCV going down. Fantasy immediately recalled, but again, his army's so far out. Hard to engage into that siege tank. Yeah. He needs to focus is... fire something down, though. Okay, Fantasy's tank going up as well. Going to push those uh, Marines back just a little bit. I like how he's just uh, swapping add-ons and stuff and <laughs> pretending this doesn't exist. There is another disable available, but there's no reason to do it. Yeah, army out of position there for Fantasy. We're actually kind of evening out based off of all these trades. Like... The double medevac, or the medevac dying with two cyclones is a pretty big deal, but that was also a pretty big deal. And it looks like um, Fantasy actually wants to take the aggression to Gumiho. Yeah, which is interesting, because Gumi's building a, a starport. Oh, cancel. Was he canceled. Did he finish that starport? Finished. There's okay, finished the starport and the, another factory as well. The big thing well. here is the raven count. What is it? One to three. Three. Ooh. That means we can disable infinite siege tanks. Infinite siege tanks. Infinite. That's terrifying. I don't care if you here. have 20 siege tanks. You could disable all of them. Ooh. Look at that. I'm See that energy? I'm not going to check your math, but I'm going to trust you on that one. It's, yeah, it's infinite. Trust me. Yeah, okay. So he only has three siege tanks out. So what do you do? How do you stop this? This is a huge push. Oh, my no, gosh. He's no position. He's coming well. down the ramp. Not okay, here we go. Not up yet. They're going to go for auto turret. They're not even going to go for the disable. Yeah, why not? The disrespect. Gooby not sieged up here, and Fantasy oh able to siege up on that ramp, pushing the third base back, and the Marines might actually be able to gun this thing down. Yeah, you know what Fantasy's doing on the other side? He's building SCVs. He's not caring. He doesn't get this, right? That would be insane if he got oh, this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Massive repair going down for those SCVs, but still dislodging Gumiho from that third base. <laughs> I love this. Counter drop! Gumiho recognizing that there's truly, you know, he's in a truly bad spot. This is the best way to actually do something. Fantasy's Reapers are killing SCVs at seven and a half minutes? What is this? Okay, we might we actually find a bit of an opening here. Right, this is nice play from Gumi. Ho counter punch workers. Then it's almost even. Forces the pull from the third here, gunning down the third, gonna move straight up into the Leaves main. one marine behind. That's really cute. Vikings here to try and take up. There's not enough Vikings here. The Medivac is gonna get away. And okay, TH Tech has arrived. Should yeah, be able to clean, this, clean up. this up. But I mean five SCVs. You know, that ain't too bad. Yeah, the only thing is how do you take your third? Yeah, Fantasy really entrenched in this position like it's the, the Maginot line. Uh, unable to get driven back at all. Four siege tanks and three ravens? And the thing is, you can't take any other third on King's Cove. It's just not possible. Well, yeah, absolutely I not. love the Lib, though. Lib can actually push this back. Yeah. So we instantly see an unsiege. We're probably going to give up this position completely. Okay, we're not. We will 
definitely see it being pushed back eventually, though. Yeah, the Liberator definitely going to make it that done, but he does have enough bio here where he can put the bio in front of those tanks and continue to get good positioning. And as long as he doesn't get drawn into that siege tank fire with his whole bio army, he should be able to continue to, to aggress this position for a little while, right? Yeah, he just wants to delay this third as long as possible, but I, he knows he has to give this up. There's a... You don't want to overcommit and lose this army here. Yeah, that's something we can talk about in game number one. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, massive disables going down. He's going to move forward big. with those Vikings. The Vikings getting on top of the Vikings. There's no, there's oh no bio gosh. here. There's no bio there's here? There's nothing. The disables going to run out. Fantasy going to be forced backwards here. I think the Ravens are probably out of energy by yeah, now. the Ravens are. Definitely. But there's enough bio from Fantasy that, you know, what is he going to do, man? Yeah, this is such a bad spot. I mean, look at the... Look at the economies. Like, the economies have just been so much better for Fantasy for so much longer. Man. Uh, also, I'm not 100% sure. Do we do we see the production? Is he going mech again? I see Hellions in production. He has to be going mech, right? He's two starports. Yeah, he does. Oh, okay, he's being greedy then. Whoa, okay. Okay. He's, tr he's already trying to win the air army. I like this play, and I think this is kind of why uh, Fantasy has so much position right now, is because of the lack of bio and the lack of ground army. Yeah. But in the long run, if Gumiho was able to take his third base, he'd be in a way better spot. Fantasy's bio completely down to the south side, away from these tanks right uh, now. And Gumiho gonna push out on top here, disabling all the tanks. Get Where's the, the bio? Get, the bio's down uh, at the at the just outside the natural position, outside that yeah, ramp. And why? He hasn't moved in. I think he was gonna try and do a counterattack and surprise Gumiho. Oh no, we're losing all of our Vikings, oh, and we are behind man. the starport. Oh, Fantasy with a crucial area oh, here. Let's see if he can get something done on this counter, though. Not gonna work, right? I don't think so, man. It's a lot it's of it. Whoa, you're oh, putting the SCVs the wrong way. Oh, watch these SCVs just. Exploding. What? Why wouldn't we? Okay, sure. Look at that number ticking up 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, it's so beautiful. Do you think Gumio actually doesn't care about SCVs? Because that feels really strange. You could have just ran those away. Man, I don't think Gumio has quite the army to not care about SCVs at this I point. His air army is way ahead, and the okay. Liberator are going to do a good job. And it might be Fantasy up, but Fantasy now is. Now we're cleaning it up. Yeah, okay. So 20, Fantasy. We just lost 20 SCVs, though, for no reason. Imagine this, we're in the exact same position, except we have 66 SCVs to 73. Totally different world. Totally different world, right? Uh, sure, the Marines are a little bit harder to deal with, but realistically, there's no reason we couldn't have just backed up. Yeah, uh, I mean, Fantasy's tank count is healthy to be able to, to uh, defend his third base. And now we're going to see a really passive game from Gumiho because he has to catch up economically. Yeah. It is 4 CC, so it's not that bad, but... I mean, it's still 20 workers losses, behind. Yeah, yeah that was... Uh, so, Fantasy had a really interesting strategy to leave that bio army. Uh, he did, you know, at the at the cost of pressuring that third base. He it gave was up a those bio gamble, units. though. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, if there was even one tank in range over there, that those Marines would have done nothing. That's and true. you could have lost your other army. Um, the only thing, though, is we see the starports and the fusion core going down. Mm -hmm. So we see the same thing happen the first game, except this time, both players are going to the Sky Toss, or Sky Turn army. So Beautiful. we'll have to see how this plays out, but I feel like this is going to favor fantasy, especially with bio. Bio actually kind of synergizes better with it because mm -hmm. Marines shoot up and tanks do not. But we'll see how this plays out. So how many Liberators do you need before you start switching into Battlecruiser production or do you just go straight to BCs from here? Um, well, we don't go straight to BCs. I don't think so, at least. There's we want I mean, at least enough to be able to push the tanks back first. Sure. And we see Liberator range. We probably won't see BCs until one... One person's going to flip the BC switch, and the other person's going to be like, oh, now I have to flip the BC switch. Just too. like when Phoenix Wars started in a Protoss yeah, game, exactly. and they're just like, okay, click, 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 click. I don't think either player does wants to gun towards it, though. Yeah. It's, it's a really big transition, too. Like, they're, they're really expensive. They're really slow to make. And I feel like those BC games are a, a lot of a gamble sometimes, depending on how your mottos go down and everything. Nice little run by here. The landed Viking should clean it up. Only five SCVs, so it's it's what Gumiho needs to do, but he's just not going to get enough done, I don't think. Yeah, this is good, though. Pulling all the SCVs away from four Hellions. Sure. What else are you going to be doing with those Hellions? This yeah, is absolutely. perfect. Anything that keeps uh, Fantasy from just, like, attacking you, because we saw what happened last time that happened. Gumiho scrubbing into Thor. Is that a misclick or is that intentional? Now, Thors are good against libs. Sure. So okay. We build a couple Thors, keep those Liberators from sieging up on top of our tanks, and, yeah, it's better than just infinite tanks. Man, this is great. Both of these players Ooh, developing really robust armies here. I really like this. It's going to be a lot of fun as this game goes further. Oh, a cute little drop here from Fantasy pushing away. Oh, let's see what he can pick off here. Pick off a lot, I think. But we need better turret placement, especially if we're playing the mech game. Yeah, Fantasy not focus firing anything down, it doesn't look like. Oh, man. Four SCVs, not worth it. Yeah, but again, we're, we got to factor in mining time and just like the ability, like every... Action is a resource at the pro level. That's true. If you're doing things like dealing with four Marines in your main and your other person's like macroing fully or they're taking bases or they're positioning or whatever. Ooh, look at that upgrades tab. It's a big difference. Ooh, fantasy. That that early game, uh, that keeping him off his, Gumiho off his third base for so long is paying off now. 
10 minutes later. Gumi has upgrades are finishing now, but still so strange to have such a huge de difference. Oh wow, yeah. He's getting ship weapons before anything else. <laughs> He's clearly committed to the attack. That's actually the most important upgrade, though, so... Sure. Okay, scan here Look at the Viking fantasy. sounds. Wow, this is insane. These two armies just getting set to posture. Oh, man, guys. Buckle up. It's about to get messy Where's, here. There's no ravens from either? Uh, One raven from fantasy. Okay. So not significant amounts of ravens here, but tank lines being established. Air armies We're just waiting. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Good luck commentating this one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, so here it is. Gumiho moving forward. Dorito Dust goes down on a lot of Gumiho's uh, fights here, but Fantasy has a really good arc here. The Siege Tank's getting a lot of shots off. Liberator's really doing great work, pushing uh, Gumiho's tanks back. The Viking count's relatively even so far, 15 to 10. Fantasy a little bit ahead here. Let's see how the focus fire is. There it is. Gumiho forced to retreat to his tank line. I think Fantasy coming out on top of that. Yeah, that's, this is really, really bad. Like, the turrets only prevent you from moving so much further. If, if he gets on top of this base, it's basically the beginning of the end. And there's only one... Oh. That yeah. Thor just walked into nice. a circle and died. Ouch. Siege tank shelling down on the turrets now. Gumiho clinging on for dear life oh, here. Oh, he's one-shotting nice Vikings. focus firing there by Fantasy. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, this is the beginning of the end. It's going to be really hard to stop the constant pushing forward and pushing back of the tanks. Once these tanks get in range of this base, this is critical economic damage. Um, this is incredible. Fantasy only has four tanks out, but that one Liberator makes such a big difference. Here we go. Mass repair going down. The SCVs just sacrificing themselves to the gods of Liberator. The Viking fight is actually going in Gumiho's favor just a little bit, but reinforcements, from Fantasy, uh, reinforcements from Fantasy arrive, and uh, he's going to be able to one-shot. Oh, there it GG. is. GG with the HH and the GG. Oh, man. That, Jake, that feels like a hard game to lose. At the, beginning, at the beginning of the day, if I had told you that Gumiho is going to go out in the loser's match, you would have smacked me in the face. <laughs> I would not have done that. You would have said, what sort of amateur <laughs> joke of a caster have I been paired with today? I just, like, slap you. Like, <laughs> I, like I'm just, like, on my phone. Oh, I think Gumiho is going to go out in the loser's match. And Jake winds up <laughs> man, yeah. right across the face. Oh, It's very surprising. I do not think Gumiho brought 